Okay, so for this tutorial video, I am going to demonstrate how to generate photometry measurements of an unknown object. Now, what I mean by an unknown object is that it is not part of the known object database. So this might be a newly discovered object. Uh, maybe somebody else discovered it and they shared their measurements, their observations of that object with you. And what you want to do is be able to work on that object to generate photometry measurements of that object. So uh, for this tutorial, for this example, uh, we are still going to work with the IVAR data set and we are simply going to pretend as though it is an unknown object. So go ahead and if you have not yet downloaded uh, this data set, go ahead and download and extract it and then uh, navigate back to the Tycho program so I'm going to add images from that first night of data and uh, this is a set of photometry measurements that we want to generate so I'm going to choose action calibrate images and again for this data set uh, I don't have any dark frame or flat frame available uh, and also keep in mind that uh, because it is photometry uh, measurements that we want to create that we do not want to uh, manipulate the signal at least as much as possible we, we want to leave it undisturbed so uh, leave the option for normalize unchecked and um, uh, and also make sure not to use pseudo flat uh, the, these options are really great uh, if you are working with the synthetic tracker in fact I would almost always recommend to use pseudo flat uh, if you are using the synthetic tracker uh, or alternatively to normalize the images uh, again those are very good options for the synthetic tracker but uh, for photometry purposes you want to leave the background levels uh, largely unchanged so uh, that being the case I would leave these options uh, unchecked so uh, I'm going to click OK and it is going to proceed to calibrate the images and then we go ahead and align them after that so navigate to the calibration output open the images, choose align, and I'm going to use internal alignment and these options here. Click OK. So this is the familiar calibrate, align, and plate solve routine. So I'm just simply preparing these images for photometry. So we'll go ahead and give it a moment to finish uh, alignment. Okay, now the final step is to plate solve. So the out alignment output here, and I'm going to choose action plate solve, and I'm going to use the default settings here. Click start, and it submits this uh, to the online solver. The solution has been found, and plate solving finished okay. Okay, so at this point, Again, we are going to pretend as though this is an unknown object. So what we can do is I'm going to go to Tools, Download Observations, uh, just to get some observations of this object. So uh, here you could type in either the number uh, or the name of the object. I happen to know it is 1627. Uh, the name of it is Ivar. If you wanted to type in Ivar, you could do that. Uh, but for here, I will type in the number. It is a confirmed object, so I'm going to click OK. And after a moment, we get the observations. So uh, th these go back to 1929, and there's quite a large number of observations here. So I'm just going to truncate to the past uh, three years, just for this example. And I'm going to copy these observations, and I'm going to clear uh, the window. So now I'm going to go back to pretending again as though this were a newly discovered object or uh, somehow it's just those observations were not published so I'm going to go to tools existing observations and here I'm presented with a blank window and I can paste in my observations of the object so I paste in those observations and again these could be from some object that has been newly discovered and not yet published uh, either way you happen to have some observations of this object so what we want to do now is view these observations in the Find Orb software. So click this button here. 
and if you get an error message, uh, for example, some number of observations match in date and observatory code, but not in other regards, it's just telling you that these observations, uh, these some, uh, the these subset of observations, it's just telling you that uh, these particular observations uh, will be ignored. So there's only one here uh, out of the hundreds, uh, so that's perfectly fine. So you can click OK to proceed and you give it a moment to compute the orbit uh, of the object from those observations. And now what we want to do is go back to Tycho and from the image manager choose Ephemeris attached to data set. So what we are going to do is attach ephemeris information to the data set. And it will present you with a list of open find orb instances. So click on the one that you just recently created. And this is that object 1627. So I click OK. And you'll notice that it now populates these columns. So for every single image, uh, these columns have been populated. So for example, uh, is the object in the field of view? This is a yes or no result. And as it turns out, it is within the field of view on every single image. Uh, we also have the right ascension, the declination, magnitude, speed, position angle, and so forth. So at this point, what we can do is open up the images in the image viewer. And again, we're pretending as though we have no clue uh, where this object is in the field of view. This is some unknown object, but we do have uh, the ephemeris information based upon those observations that we know of the object. So uh, one option here is to uh, use the X and Y coordinates uh, of that ephemeris information. So the object is expected to be at this XY position on the first image. So what we can do is go to the image viewer and choose location center on XY and it will prompt for the XY coordinates of the object. So you can type in uh, 965, 543 uh, as those correspond to the XY uh, position of the object on that first image and then click OK. So as you can see it has now centered us uh, to the object location. So this is how you can start to understand uh, where that object is located. And if I want to, I can create a marker number one uh, for this first position, and then choose uh, some other image along the way. In fact, at this point, if I wanted to, I could simply animate the frames uh, knowing where it started off at. So uh, that's one approach. Uh, or I could go ahead and type in the XY coordinates uh, on this other uh, image here. So it's located here at uh, 1110, 364, and then choose uh, create marker 2. Now again it's always good practice to double click uh, on the object. So that will center it in the crosshairs and then choose right click uh, create marker 2. So that, that is one approach uh, with the ephemeris information. Uh, the other is to uh, basically create a stack. So you could create a stack uh, using ephemeris information. Uh, so if I go ahead and do that here, uh, uh, let me go ahead and choose median stack just for this example. Then uh, you'll notice uh, after a bit of a delay, again because I am in this tutorial not using GPU acceleration. Uh, if I were, it would be uh, much faster. Uh, but uh, here we have the median combined stack and I would double click on it and then choose uh, create track current position. So this will create a stack uh, from, uh, I'm sorry, it will, it will create a track uh, from that uh, current position. And so here we have the object, uh, the track positions. Now you will notice that it is not following the object uh, it's, it's not keeping it 100% within the crosshairs. And so the way to fix that, it, and that's just simply due to the fact that the ephemeris may not be 100% accurate. So we want to make sure that we have a, an accurate track. So I would say uh, create marker one, 
on that first track position and then go to the last track position again zoom in double click create marker 2 and now you can create a track from markers so now you have two tracks uh, the first of which is uh, an initial approximation of the, the, the motion and the second is now a very accurate uh, track based upon those markers where you you double clicked on it you centered it and you have the actual motion of it as opposed to the ephemeris motion so here uh, if you wanted to you could then uh, again you can right click generate photometry set and it will generate those photometry measurements using the markers and if you watch the other the other tutorial video I go into more detail on how to specify comparison stars and so forth so this is simply uh, how do you create photometry measurements of an object that uh, might not be in the in the known object database uh, of course you could use the synthetic tracker as well however that again assumes that the, the background level of the, the images uh, are consistent so you would have to calibrate them differently but uh, using ephemeris information is indeed one approach now if you were to create a ephemeris stack with average uh, that's perfectly fine as well uh, let's take a look at that example so if I go create stack ephemeris with average combine uh, we have this presentation that looks great uh, if I wanted to go back to median though uh, then you might notice that uh, the the presentation is quite different than before this is a bit more uh, white out than before and that's because uh, typically the background level is computed automatically so it's going to for the display purposes it will uh, compute an automatic background level uh, just in contrast and intensity appropriately but uh, if you want to fix that simply click on it once more and now you have the uh, refresh display here so uh, if I go back to average create once again you'll you'll see it more clearly uh, this is not a good presentation so click on it uh, the radio button here and now it will refresh that uh, background display the reason this is happening is once again the images uh, essentially uh, they have a very inconsistent background level so if I scroll through here uh, it, it is using the automatic setting for the background level so it it may trick you into thinking that they have consistent background level when in fact it's simply fixing it uh, in this presentation so if I go to manual uh, background level then if I repeat that same process and now you'll see the difference so let me let me go ahead and do automatic on that very first one and then go back to manual so I start off with the first image and as I scroll through you can see this variation in background level so the, these last few images in the sequence have a very very different background level so uh, that is where uh, you have that uh, sort of that presentation in the average combine where it looked very faint uh, it had sort of a black rectangle there so just keep that in mind uh, the way again the way to really fix that uh, is you could do that in calibration uh, but that's not so ideal uh, when you are working with photometry so um, just this items to consider uh, so at this point what we could do we go ahead and uh, using our markers we can generate a photometry set now keep in mind that you probably will want to choose your own comparison stars and if you're not sure how to do that or you forgot how to do it then the previous tutorial I created has a section on how to perform that process there is also a section in the user guide that explains that in more detail but for now for this tutorial video just to keep it short I am going to use the automatic comparison stars so with that I'm going to go ahead and click on generate photometry set once we generate these photometry measurements uh, then you can see uh, I, I might want to I graph a light curve and you can see it's an unnamed object uh, we do not have HG correction applied we do not yet have light time correction so how do you do that with a quote-unquote unknown object well one is to uh, apply object data 
and here it would normally ask you for the number and the name but uh, in this case again we are pretending as though it is an unknown object so it would not have a number or a name so you would instead apply from observations so you would choose this option click OK and here we would choose our find orb instance so uh, this is the one that we opened uh, about 10 minutes ago now I click OK uh, but before I do that I just want to show you these columns are currently blank uh, so this is the case prior to applying object data so once I click OK then you'll notice that these columns are now populated and if I go back to the graph plot all sets you will also notice that HG correction has been applied and light time correction has been applied so both of those options are now applied by default because it has uh, object data available. Now it still says unnamed object and so if you want to fix that you can right click and choose uh, view edit metadata and here you can then specify an object number or an object name. So if you wanted to type in a number you could do so but if it is a new discovery it is unlikely to have an object number. Therefore uh, you would need to type in uh, some sort of uh, MPC designation. So MPC designation uh, could be something along the lines of uh, 2021 uh, OB. So you can click Save Changes and now you will see that this column is populated. So whenever you regenerate the graph uh, you will now see uh, the object label here. Now another way to do it is to go to the graph menu, choose settings, and you could use a custom object label. So if you wanted to do that, uh, you could type in your own uh, my custom label, for example. So some uh, object designation, click OK, and now you will see it will populate with that text. So there are several ways to do it. And again, this is how you would then generate photometry information on a, an object that is not part of the known database. That's about it for this tutorial video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.